Jarrett Nelson is packing for a day on the trap line. He recently moved back to his home community of Montreal Lake to follow his culture. In the winter, trapping is his full-time occupation. As with most of our communities, uh, our culture is uh, a dying tradition and I'm trying to preserve it and keep it going. Nelson learned how to trap from his grandfather. Like most trappers, he spends a lot of time clearing trails. This land has been used by his family for tens of generations. Any day at the trap line, whether you catch something or not, you're always learning something out here. Uh, just being out here, you, you don't even worry about uh, the, uh, anything that comes with the office work. The fur trade is considered by some to be Canada's earliest industry. Currently, fur prices are up. Low fur prices and the loss of culture made many trappers abandon the practice. However, two years ago, the Asian fashion industry renewed the popularity of fur. Since then, the price of pelts has significantly increased. High-quality coyotes sell for around $80. Martins are around $170. This is making trapping a viable way of life for First Nations and others who harvest fur. If our people start learning their cultures and traditions and going back to the lands and looking after their trap lines, yes, there is a guarantee that people can make a, a healthy living and a viable source of income. Uh, if you put the, the work and the sweat into it, you're going to make money. The Prince Albert Grand Council is hosting the province's first fur table. Here, multiple buyers come to bid on fur and buy directly from trappers. Tom Bird is from Reindeer Lake. So there's something in you that's just got to go do it. He's trapped all his life and has seen the ups and downs in the industry. You have to understand trapping. Trapping is just like a part of you. You go to the bush mm -hmm. and you're just like a part of you. You walk the same trails where your forefathers used to walk to income. I believe the trapping is coming back. You know, the Martins, the top price right now, the Lynx, you know, they're a good price. Everything's over the $100 mark. Times are different now. Trappers require cash to buy snow machines, equipment and gas and forest fires and logging has devastated some families' trap lines. You could have a good fur block, all of a sudden the fire just could come through the next, next year, and you're done. That's, that's our problem with the lead burn policy. It, it could ruin the, like, you could ruin your $30,000, $40,000 trapping. It could be ruined overnight. According to the Saskatchewan Ministry of the Environment, the number of trappers in the province has increased along with fur prices. In 2010, they sold a total of 2,700 licenses across the province. By 2013, that number jumped by one-third to 3,600. Nelson checks his traps about every two days. Sometimes he's lucky and sometimes he's not. On this day, there are a lot of empty traps. To the elders and the, the older trappers, the, uh, to the Cree people, is called the stingy month. Uh, reason being is uh, the hunting, the trapping, the fishing all slows down. A good trapper has to outwit their prey. Nelson uses his grandfather's recipe to add scent to lure in animals. The lynx, marten and fisher are typically easy to catch. It's the wolves that are very hard to catch. Uh, we've, we've snared seven this winter and um, I think that's out of probably 40 snares. Finally, Nelson is successful and finds a lynx. It fetches one of the best prices. This winter, he's one of the few trappers to harvest a number of them. But his greatest reward is passing on his skills to the next generation. It's one of my jobs from my grandfather. Um, he always told us uh, never to forget our traditions, our way of life, our culture. I'm teaching my kids our way of life out here, uh, my nephews, I uh, work with a lot of youth in the reserve. Uh, we call it the, uh, the trap program. With more international trade, Nelson hopes more First Nations will once again make a living off the land. For Shaw, I'm Lisa Rizzo.